In a way, Western scholarship may have a big part to play. In fact, I think it probably has got a big part to play already in reorienting our understanding of these texts. But for me, I think the chief thing is, um, is, is there a reading that we can give of the Buddha's teaching? I'm saying text, but really what I mean is the Buddha's teaching, and the, the Pali Canon is just one place where we've got a well, we've got a complete set of his teachings. So it's the only place we have got a complete set of his teachings of an ancient Indian language, where we can go back to it and we can reread some of this material and perhaps find things within it which are equally as plausible as anything that the tradition may be able to offer. And in its plausibility, I'm not saying rightness or truth or anything like that, but in its plausibility or coherence might have a way of reorienting us in the, con- in the contemporary world into forms of practice which are much more suitable for this age, you know, where we don't have to take on um, the huge edifices of culture but I suppose what I'm extremely worried about is, and I think I know this because I've been there myself in my early practice years, particularly in the Tibetan tradition, of trying to turn, turn ourselves into some type of imitation Tibetans or imitation Thai Buddhists or whatever form it might it may take. Um, and the point is that we've got such an interfusion of culture with the Buddhism, it's very difficult to disentangle it, so people take on the whole lot. We need to get into a dialectical relationship with it from our position as 21st Western, Westerners in relation to traditions which possibly stopped growing, um, certainly um, the latest, the 19th century, and sometimes a lot more earlier than that. You know, so we need to come into a relationship. We need to be thinking beings in relationship to these, not just sponges. You know, I'm very keen on doing that, and that's why I have a particular way I teach, is I don't want people to be sponges. You know, I want them to think through this material, and that's, I think, one of the big things about redefining whatever secular Buddhism becomes, even if we abandon that word, is coming into a thinking relationship to the teachings which I think is what the Buddha is really encouraging us to do. Um, And to me, uh, a lot of the traditions seem to pay lip service to, but never actually do, is, you know, the Buddha says, well, say everything he says like gold. This is a particular Tibetan version of it. You know, say it like gold and weigh it and see if it has the meanings and then say you should believe this. You know, so there's a contradiction there. Uh, I'd much rather go back and actually go back to those teachings and see radically where it fits in with our experience and particularly our experience of the 21st century and living the lives that we live in the 21st century with the other great determining factor in Western Buddhism which is most people are lay people. Monasticism is a very, very small part of what's going on in the Western tradition. People will feel drawn to it but it's only going to be a very, very small part of what we call Western Buddhism or Nikaya Buddhism or secular Buddhism or any of these things.